What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. Is where we go back a week, give you all of your tech news stories that you probably missed. Hopefully, you didn't. Hopefully, you watch all my videos. I should actually be a little bit more positive about that. And we talk about the craziness of what's the future of Samsung folding and flipping and rollable and just the craziness of phones with that, including watches are going to have some of that technology and some biometrics built into that stuff, as well as the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We're going to have a bunch of information about that in this week's uh, video that you're going to watch today, as well as information on Tons of other stuff, guys, including the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, the full specs on that. Enjoy this week's video. We'll see you in the next one. Let's jump into the tech news. Our first story, as you can see here, coming from Yogesh Brar saying, here's something for Samsung fans. Galaxy S22 is fire. Now, I do think these are dummy devices. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're dummy devices. But we get a good indication of what these are going to look like on the S22 Ultra on the left with the squared off edges, the matte finish, S22 Plus in the middle, and then the S22 over there on the right, all in that kind of black color. I do prefer the matte look. The shiny colors are going to be fingerprint mag magnets if they end up being super shiny like this. But you can see the triple camera setup on uh, these phones. You've got the flash. You've got the uh, just I, they're completely different design versus that uh, S22 Note phone or whatever they end up calling it. Just cool to see this kind of stuff. And then when we see the white ones, I don't know. I might choose white. White is kind of dope looking in here. It's funny the one the white one for the S22 Plus kind of looks blue. Am I am I crazy there? Maybe it's probably the lighting, but yeah, it looks pretty bluish there. And then, but ultimately, I, yeah, a matte again. I, I like the matte. I don't want to see the shiny. I like that matte looking white there. I like the squared off edges. It's cool. The, the S22 Ultra Note, whatever you want to call it, is looking like a bad, bad phone in a good way that, I mean. Next up, check this headline out, guys. Tell me this isn't crazy. You're talking about these Samsung Galaxy Bud earbuds with biometric sensors. Samsung patents Galaxy Bud Bluetooth earbuds with biometric sensors for healthcare purposes, including HRM and SPO2 sensors. So what that means is you're looking at earbuds that will include biometric sensors for heart rate monitoring and a saturation of percutaneous oxygen, I probably butchered that, 3D renders created by uh, Parvez Khan on here. And it just shows off what potentially could come out with buds that will be able to determine those factors if you put your, I guess your fingers, your thumbprints on there. It's wild, that is actually pretty freaking interesting. I will admit though, if this did come out, would I use it? I'd probably say no, because I didn't use it when I was on the back of the Galaxy phones. I probably wouldn't use it now. I wouldn't be like, oh, I'm dying to know what my blood oxygen is now. Like, I don't, I don't care, but I don't know. Maybe you would want it. Let me know in the comments down below if that stuff interested you. What I would like to see though is a fingerprint sensor on the watches. That's what I would really like to see. And then our last story of the day, as you can see from this headline from Sam Mobile, where it says the S Pen is arguably the most important Samsung mobile device of 2021. And I wanted to kind of throw that back to you. That of the day is about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. As if you didn't know, it's going to have the Snapdragon 8th Gen first generation chip or whatever they end up calling it. Like it's got the craziest name, the rumored to have the craziest name. Uh, and we're going to see some benchmarks for this new chip. Again, it will be called the Snapdragon Gen 1 for the S8 Plus. And here's the benchmarks. Benchmark's not a huge deal to me, but on Geekbench 5, 1223 for single core, 3195 for multi-core. These are kind of pedestrian. These aren't amazingly crazy benchmarks. And we're hearing weird stuff. We're hearing like, oh my God, it's gonna have amazing multi-core scores, or it's gonna have, <clears throat> compared to like last generation and other, but honestly, everything we've seen so far, for the most part, has been pretty pedestrian, pretty normal, pretty run of the mill. But still, don't live by benchmarks. This is gonna be just as fast and just as great as any other tablet uh, from last year, <laughs> or you know, even in the future, it'll probably be very similar as well. Like we've reached a kind of tipping point before these tablets probably need fans almost because they run, they're gonna start to run really, really hot with such high performing processors inside. But yeah, it's getting kind of crazy. Still good specs to do anything that you want on it so I wouldn't be too worried. Next up, as you can see from the headline, Samsung might unveil a new wireless charger with the S22 series 
of phones and there's nothing too special about this just throwing it out there that if you're waiting to get a charger on there this one's going to be called the ep p2400 it has a rounded square shape and the upcoming wireless charger appears to uh, be able to charge at fastest 15 watts so nothing too crazy on the wireless charging port uh, but then you can also charge other devices such as watches and earbuds for as low as two watts this next one is really what I'm excited about. There's a couple of things that I'm excited about for the future of technology. Folding phones, that's in, in sliding phones and all that kind of technology within smartphones. But then the other part of it is AR glasses and VR glasses. I think AR glasses are maybe a little bit more exciting because VR is so immersive and like you're locked into that world and you don't see anything else. Whereas AR is like you put a set of glasses on and you can see you know things in front of you and interact with them, but still be able to also see, again, what's going on around you and hear what's going on around you. So I think that might be a little bit more accessible and probably more accepted by society. And Oppo has come out and announced that they are going to be releasing their Oppo AR glasses, which will ultimately be called the Oppo Air Glass. And there's some things about these that we're gonna talk about. Um, that you potentially might be interested in, such as they're very lightweight at only 30 grams. They have a unique Spark Micro Projector, bespoke diffractive optical waveguide, cutting edge micro LED, scratch resistant sapphire crystal, ways of controlling. You can use your head or use um, the things on the side, the, the, the little guide on the side. There's a thing you can control it with. You get two frames, you can get either black or silver and it has seamless connection with Oppo watch and phones. Now, one thing to know about this is that it is going to launch in China of Q, Q, <laughs> quarter one, 2022. Um, so don't expect this to roll out in America and other places, it's gonna be limited quantity. This is really early stuff, truly AR technology. You can use this in a multitude of different ways from uh, seeing the directions right in front of you while you're walking or biking or driving your car, but still be able to see the road or see what's in front of you if you're walking or biking. You also have the ability to use these as a monitor. So if you're doing a speech, no one else will see it, but you could look at the crowd and still, you know, be able to see the words that you're supposed to say in your speech. You can see your notifications. You can interact with stuff. It's it potentially watch videos. There's a lot of cool things built into this technology. It's going to really change and revolutionize the world around us in a whole new way. And hopefully won't be as distracted as always looking down at your phone. You will have glasses on. Uh, most people will anyway of some sort, at least in the near future, I would say in the next five years, I think most people will have this, especially the younger generation. And I think within 10 years, the everybody will have something like this. So five or 10 years are looking at, probably everyone's gonna have something on their eyes and on their head that they can view content with. First story of the day is about the Oppo Find N, which is the new foldable phone on the market today. And that phone, we've basically heard everything about it. Some of the things weren't leaked so well in terms of the price, uh, the crease, things like that. So we're gonna dive deeper into that. With that said, let's talk about it. So first of all, it's gonna be 1200 bucks and it's only gonna be released in China. I don't think this phone is gonna come out anywhere else unfortunately. So it seems like it's always only going to come out in China. So if you were looking forward to this phone potentially coming out in your neck of the woods, looking like it probably won't. Also, when you factor in uh, the crease, what about the crease? Is it less? Is it more than the Galaxy Z Fold 3? And a couple of sources here. First, Chun says, more fine den crease picks taken by my friend at the offline event. From what I can see on the picks from my friend and other sources, the crease is not as deep or as visible like the Fold 3, and you can feel the differences with your own hand, according to my friend. Taking a closer look at those photos, here's what they look like. Again, it looks pretty good with the crease. I'm not bothered by the crease, but I know a lot of you guys have a little crease fetish. And then Ice Universe also dives into it, saying for those who have fine creases and fine in, their hearts are fragile. In fact, they've begun to feel inferior. Just looking for psychological comfort for Fold 3's sense of superiority. In fact, once Fold 3 is compared with Find N, Fold 3 has lost the competition. And when he compares these two phones side by side, you can see a bigger divot in the middle of the display on the Fold 3 versus the Find N. Not the end of the world, guys. Don't fret about this. This is really not that big a deal. You get used to it. It does not ruin the experience at all, one bit. So again, don't even 
you know, worry about that at all. And then also to add on to this, if you're a Fold fan, in general folding phones, uh, Ross Young says, and this is just a reiteration, he says, you can see that we called the Oppo Find N size correct way back in July. Thus, you can expect next Xiaomi size to be what we showed below as well, 8.1 inches. Although the upcoming Vivo size is now 8.03. So we do have some bigger fold phones coming out versus the Z Fold 3. That'll definitely launch in China and probably other places in the world. And we definitely have that to look forward to. As you can see from the headline, Sam Mobile has dropped a big juicy piece of Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra specs and features revealed and when we go we're going to go to anthony the galax tweet because he put it so nicely it's so you know it's top to bottom galaxy tab s8 ultra 14.6 wq x g a plus display meaning it's going to be a 2k plus resolution display on there amoled at that cameras 12 megapixel 12 megapixel wide and ultra wide so two selfie cameras on the back you're going to get a 13 and a 6 megapixel which will be a main and an ultra wide it's going to have the snapdragon 8 gen 1 which is going to be their newest processor from Snapdragon, 8, 12, or 16 gigs of RAM, depending upon which storage amount you choose, 128, 256, or 512. It's gonna have a monumental 11,200 milliamp battery with 45 watt charging, run one UI 4.1, DeX portrait mode, and DeX landscape. And that's coming from, like I said, Sam Mobiles, and he just put it into a nice, beautiful tweet for us. But looking like an absolute beast of a tablet, I am probably gonna grab this one, at least I feel like I'm going to. The only thing that's holding me back, and I've said it a few times, is it really needs a solid, sturdy keyboard covered case, something akin to what the iPad has, iPad Pro has, because you can put that, on my, I can put it on my stomach, on the bed, I can put it on a table and it works great. The last ones that, have, that Samsung has put out for their tablets, not so much. You can't really put it on anything less than a sturdy table. Galaxy S21 Fan Edition, as we know, at least the rumors, is going to be announced, released in January, which is next month. We're mere weeks away from the release and launch of this phone. Let's go through one more time the full range of specs for this phone. So looking at an S21 Fan Edition specs, we'll have a 6.4 inch AMOLED Full HD Plus 120 Hertz display. You're looking at a Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 with 5G, very, very fast processor in there. Eight gigs of RAM, 128 or 256 gigs of storage. You have the camera of a 12, 12, eight megapixel lineup on the back there. On the front, you get a 32 megapixel. Bluetooth 5.0 GPS. It's got NFC IP68, a 4,500 milliamp battery. It can charge as fast for 25 watts wired or wirelessly for 15 watts. It's gonna run Android 12 and run 100 at, and way at, at 177 gram. So it looks like it's gonna be a really, really nice phone. A great enough phone for almost anybody on the market that's looking for a phone. Keep your eye on this one. I know it has the number 21 in it and they're moving up to 22, but this still might be a big contender of phones to get, especially on that mid-tier range. Next up is an absolutely wild Galaxy Z Flip 3 competitor. I actually think it looks more sleek and maybe even cooler than the Galaxy Z Flip 3. Now I wanna let you know it's only gonna come out in China, so keep that in mind unless you live in China, which I don't know how many of you do that actually watch this channel because you have to use a VPN and blah, 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 blah. Actually, if you live in China and watch the channel, leave me a comment down below. I'd be very, very curious to know. With that said, let's check this out because it's absolutely beautiful. And this is the Huawei P50 Pocket. And ultimately, when we take a look at this phone, it's obviously going to compete it's got that same fold in half design. It's get a circular camera and also a circular display on the back so that you can take photos of yourself a lot more easy. And we don't know a ton about this phone, but it's rumored to have a Snapdragon 888. Um, also, it's rumored to have a side mounted fingerprint sensor, a USB-C port for charging. It's gonna run the Harmony OS 2.0. It will not have Google apps installed or any of the Google stuff installed because of the issues they got going on in the West. Probably the display is made by uh, BOE, made, uh, and we don't know anything else really about it, but what we do know also is that Ross Young has come out and said that the P50 Pocket, because he's the master of displays, saying that the P50 Pocket will have a 6.85 inch display with a one inch cover display, so pretty interesting on there. And uh, ultimately we can also look at uh, Ishan Agarwal's text 
Here where he tweeted out the Huawei P50 Pocket is a flip foldable smartphone has been revealed in a Harper's Bazaar China shoot with Chinese actress Guan Xiao Tong. Wow, looks blingy, definitely going a very similar route to the OG Galaxy Z Flip. And the launch is supposed to be on December 23rd, which is literally next week. So a wild, wild looking phone. Too bad it's not coming to America or the rest of the world, but it looks awesome. What do you guys think? I don't talk about video games a lot, but I thought I'd throw this in Xbox Series X Elite. This is just a mock-up of potentially what it could look like, but I had to share it because I thought it looked so really awesome and cool. Uh, this is coming from Let's Go Digital and they show off these amazing you know, backlit green lines wrapping around the display along with just a very modern, it looks way cooler, I think, than the regular Xbox Series X. I hope it would look like this, but I love the old school green on there um, with the modern flair of what it looks like now with the Series X. It's just a great looking mock-up. Hopefully it looks like this. We'll end up waiting to see that. Next story is this, Samsung Galaxy Z Fold dual slide. This is rumored through some uh, copyrights that have been obtained that this would be the first Samsung phone to expand in width and height and enables multi new user interface possibilities on here. And again, this is just wild stuff. The stuff that Samsung's looking in to do. I mean, you check out how it angles up on one side and then it doesn't on the other and it expands out to make it larger. Obviously this would probably be a mechanical thing more so than anything that you can do, but there's so many possibilities with these sliding and rollable displays, the Galaxy Z Fold dual slide, ultimately completely wild and crazy. And like I told you, it's an incredibly interesting day of tech with uh, stuff that's been, uh, thought about and thought and, and, and pushed to the future of devices that are going to come out and stuff that is coming out. It's just awesome to be a fan of tech and where stuff is going right now because we're really in early stages of all this stuff and it's only going to get better. First, our first story of the day is about a new phone with a new patent and we've been talking about these sliding, rolling phones and this is another iteration of that and this is from Samsung as well. And when we take a look at this one, this you can see is saying, and it's from Let's Go Digital, saying that the uh, Galaxy Z folding and sliding smartphone with Samsung S Pen support patents, a retractable smartphone, the screen can be folded to change its position with virtual keyboard and S Pen compatibility. And it goes in a lot of different orientations. Uh, you can slide it around, you can slide it up, you can slide it halfway, you can just you hold it almost like a normal phone. You can angle it, you can uh, write on it with an S Pen, you can type on it, you can just use it like you would any other phone. There's a lot of use cases for this, but I think, you know, when you add a sliding rollable folding phone and you add an S Pen to it, it potentially adds another dimension of life to these devices for productivity, such as signing contracts, maybe a little bit easier because we can multitask a little bit easier because they have all these different orientations that you can set the phone into. What do you guys think? You think this is a more of a selling point for yourself with these sliding and rollable displays to add the S Pen compatibility? Let me know in the comments below. Next up, Galaxy S22 Ultra. A lot of the accessories, official ones, have been leaked out from cases. And so if you're interested in some of the cases, those have been leaked out. But I think the most interesting thing that's been leaked out in terms of accessories is this right here, the S Pen. This is the S Pen that goes along with the S22 Ultra. Ultra phone, which you can see right here, fits in there, you can use it. Um, and it looks eerily similar, and it looks like it's probably gonna be, at least from initial looks at this, very, very similar in uh, stature and size and look and everything for the new phone. This is coming from Roland Kwan, it says likely the new old S Pen for the S22 Ultra slash Note. And uh, what about you guys? Are you excited about that note being the the pen being inside of this phone? Is it a is it a is it a reason to buy it for you guys? Is it like okay, it's in there. I'm definitely buying it now because it's going to be my note replacement. Next story is also about the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and it's an opinion from Ice Universe. And everybody has an opinion. Some matter, some don't. Uh, but everybody has an opinion. They're not always the same. But this shows a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel in terms of the camera for the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And I think it's gonna make you very, very excited. And again, 
Let's check this out. It's a tweet from Ice Universe saying, seeing the photo sample of the S22 Ultra camera, I was so excited that I couldn't sleep. He also goes on to say that although the hardware specifications look literally little different from the S21 Ultra, Samsung's optimization ability is very strong and the sample S22 Ultra looks much stronger. And he continues on saying, I only have one suggestion for the S22 Ultra. Bye, bye, bye. I used to worry about the camera a little bit, but now I don't have to worry about the camera a little bit. The camera is very strong. So this is fantastic news. And again, it's only one opinion. His opinion's not the be all end all. We all might have a different opinion. I'll be curious to see, but just having at least somebody's opinion that's actually seen a camera sample and is able to compare it again against an S21 Ultra, I think is pretty important and pretty interesting at the very least. In this video today, instead of like going through some you know stories that you probably honestly don't care about because there's really nothing today, I'm gonna talk about the five reasons you should upgrade to the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now this should be a universal reasons to upgrade anything if you're coming from an S21 Ultra or one of the Pixel phones or one of the iPhones or maybe something from Huawei or Oppo or OnePlus. I think these are pretty good reasons on why you should upgrade. So with that said, we'll also have questions at the end of this video. So with that said, let's jump into today's video. So first reason you should upgrade to the Galaxy S22 Ultra is the display. Why about the display? It's gonna reportedly have the brightest display ever of any phone, obviously including a Samsung phone as well. So you're looking at 1500 nits of brightness. And why is that important? It's gonna be really, really great for using this when you're outdoors or you're, you know, maybe in your house too. Maybe it's sunny in your house or maybe you just love a really, really, really bright display. It's gonna be fantastic for that. And then beyond it just being bright, Samsung for me anyway, the way I feel about it, makes the best looking displays. They're always bright, they're always vibrant, they have a complete control over the display and the color technology and the temperature and everything about it. It's gonna have 120 hertz refresh rate, 2K plus resolution. It's gonna be an amazing display. It'll probably win dis display of the year or be one or two switched with Apple or something. But ultimately, I always like their displays better than Apple's anyway. So for me, it's gonna be the display again and then this time it's gonna be for the brightness next is the performance now the performance on all the phones that have come out this year from the galaxy s21 ultra which had a snapdragon 888 to the pixel 6 pro which had a tensor processor to basically any phone it has a great performance you can game you can do whatever you want but the S22 Ultra should bring it another ring up and especially in the graphics category with their new Snapdragon Gen 1 processor or the Exynos 2200 processor. And these are rumored to be using four millimeter processors inside, which is going to allow for better performance and better battery life potentially. You're gonna be able to open up apps faster. You're gonna be able to have gaming that is supporting VRS and ray tracing and HDR gaming. And that's really gonna be where these new processors shine. It might not be so much in day-to-day -day operation where you're like, you know, using your phone, you might see some improvement, but ultimately it's really gonna be in the gaming side of this, where you're gonna see huge leaps and bounds, maybe higher uh, resolutions that the, the game couldn't run at, or maybe higher frame rates, and just, again, all those extra features, like ray tracing and stuff like that, that's really, really gonna improve your gaming situation when you game on your S22 Ultra. Integrated S Pen is definitely number three. Why? It's so nice to be able to house your S Pen inside of your phone so that you don't have to deal with it. There's nothing better than you just, especially if you're an S Pen user, you know, you can, they have it, they had it with a case in the S21 Ultra. That was kind of lame. It wasn't my favorite thing. I'm not a big S Pen user anyway, but still, the last thing I want to do is have to always have a specific case just to house my S Pen. It's going to be much nicer when I can house it inside of the phone. It's a big selling point. It's going after that note market of people that have been underwhelmed for the last couple of years because a, a, a true note replacement hasn't been out and this is going to be a true note replacement. It should have all the note software that's been in there. Um, even the S22 Ultra name, there's rumors that's gonna be called the Galaxy S22 Note. So by me saying S22 Ultra, I also know that it might also be called the S22 Note. But with that said, again, full 
full note Bluetooth functionality so you can use it as a shutter button and do controlling of the phone from not even touching the screen and all kinds of other features that maybe we don't even know yet. So it's gonna be a big selling point for the S22 Ultra Note or whatever you wanna call it. Samsung, especially on their flagship phones, always usually comes out with really, really nice cameras. Um, taking photos, taking videos, usually always comes out really, really great. Well, we've heard lately, especially from Ice Universe, that, because he's seen camera samples, that the S22 Ultra camera samples are that much better. I'm talking really, really good compared to the S21 Ultra. So when we see this S22 Ultra, S22 Note, we're looking at much better improvement of cameras. He's saying that some of it comes from that processing side of the software, which to me is absolutely fine because you can take something like a Pixel 5, which camera spec wise doesn't have amazing cameras, but when you take photos in with it, you're like, wow, that came out beautiful. And if we can get some of that same kind of magic built into the S22 Ultra, S22 Note, then we're looking at a phone with maybe one of the best cameras of all time. And I'm super looking forward to it. And video alone, I always like the video on there. The stabilization is usually good. They give you tons of features. It's usually a knockout camera video package when you get a Samsung Galaxy S, you know, 22 Ultra or whatever version of the S line you get. So really, really looking forward to the camera experience. The last one is design. There's a brand new design with the S22 Ultra slash S22 Note. It's going to have the squared off edges all the way around, not these rounded corners like you got on the previous S line. So it's a really, you know, about face in a way. It's changing over to that Note side. So really we're getting an S line, but then we're also getting a Note line at the same time with it all built into one phone, giving you uh, the Note people an upgraded reason because they love that squared off edge and they love the design and love the integrated S Pen, but then also the S people who are like, hey, it's coming out the same time as the S line, but I wanna get the best phone and that's gonna be the best phone that Samsung releases at the time and that's gonna probably be the phone a lot of people are gonna end up buying. And I think those are five major reasons why you should wanna upgrade and get this phone. And obviously there'll be more things as, as time goes on about this phone, there'll be software things that are on there. There'll be feature things built into the camera. There'll be maybe even hardware things that we don't even know, such as much faster charging. There's you know rumored that's gonna 45, maybe 65 watts of fast charging charging in there, um, which is obviously a big reason to upgrade. But I think, you know, the things I've mentioned are pretty good uh, for the moment of what we know right now. First story of the day is about the Galaxy S22 Ultra and their 108 megapixel camera and how much potentially it's improved and how it's improved over last generation. So check this out. This tweet is coming from Ice Universe who has reportedly seen some samples of this. And he goes on to say that compared to the default 108 megapixel picture quality, S22 Ultra's new AI, which is artificial intelligence, picture quality enhancement mode can make 108 megapixel better in detail, color, and brightness and like i said he does have a thing that says i've seen the comparison sample but he cannot share it so this is we keep hearing great things at least from him not so many much any other people because it doesn't seem like many other people have seen samples from these cameras and we're hearing a lot of great things especially compared to last year it was a great camera took really good photos you know uh, my complaint about it is a lot of the time especially with basically every samsung phone is the shutter speed you know i'm taking a picture of somebody if there's not complete complete optimal lighting the photos especially of people really come out a little bit crappy blurry un, you know not completely satisfied unlike what you get usually with a pixel or an iphone but still Stuff we're hearing about this seems like they're using a lot more AI in their photos. Maybe improved AI should be the better part of what I'm saying than what they've done previously. So I'm very, very excited to see this. And AI, obviously, if you see it on Pixel phones, it does crazy work with it, amazing work. Next up is what the exact look of the Galaxy S22 Ultra green color is going to look like because we have found out the color exact like color number for it and the people over at let's go digital have created a render based off of that and their headline says the s22 ultra 5g green ice universe reveals details of the green variant s22 ultra these 3d product renders show the new top model from samsung in the exact color code and you can see it's a nice deep dark 
green. I think a lot of people are going to want this color. I know I'm looking at it and I'm like, damn, that's kind of fresh. That's kind of a, a kind of bit of a color that I definitely want. I can live with that. I can dig that. I can see, you know, the S Pen coming out green. That'd be great. Uh, the dark green on the back of the phone. It's classy. It looks nice. It looks different than what is the color on other phones. It's great for Christmas. It's great if you live up north with the pine trees and the beautiful smell of the fresh air. What do you guys think about that color? Is that a color you'd think about getting? Let me know in the comments down below. With that said, let's jump into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that. First question comes from Weekend Warrior to answer that monochrome question. It's the bedtime alarm setting, just turning it off in alarm setting. So what he's talking about is, I got a question yesterday about someone had a watch and a, a Samsung phone, and when they did something on their watch, it turned the setting on their screen like dark gray on the phone and they couldn't figure it out. So that's what he's talking about. I couldn't remember what it was, but that's the setting. So just mess with that setting and you'll be all good. Edgar Baez says, hey Greg, are you charging your Z Fold 3 for the S22 Note? Char changing, changing, he says. I, I said charging, but he meant changing. No, I'm not. I will trade in my S21 Ultra for the S22 Note. Eddie Driver says, I've had the Z Fold 3 from day of release in the UK. Are you finding uh, it does not, it don't fold flat as it used to? Mine seems to have a slight curve to it when fully open. It's not major, but slightly annoying. Cheers, I keep mine in the case and I haven't really messed with it too much in terms of like, do I, does it not sit flat? I haven't noticed, I did do a video recently. Let me just put it on my desk. I don't know, no, I don't know. I mean, slight, I guess. You can see, does it seem not straight? You guys let me know in the comments down below. But to me, it doesn't look too bad. New York's Finest says, as you already know, Google started charging for their storage. I have 512 gigabyte storage in my Note 10 Plus and S22 won't have the SIM card. Which free unlimited photo storage app do you recommend for me to store my photos, photos when I switch over to the S22 Ultra? I don't have a free one for you. I personally use Google's Photos and I pay for it. I pay for the two terabyte plan. I find it completely worth it. I love the way they organize their photos. It's easy to find them. You can search by keywords. I don't know of a free one for you. I think Amazon, if you have Amazon Prime, they give you free photo storage, I believe. You can look into Amazon that if you have Amazon Prime. Other than that, I'd probably say just get Google Photos. It's totally worth it. Timothy Hammock says, question, someone coming from an LG Wing or anyone with LG's device, should they upgrade to the Z Fold 3 or the S22 Ultra or the Z Fold 4 or the new roll? What would you recommend coming from an LG Wing? Thank you and my early Merry Christmas to you and your family and Happy New Year's. Thank you so much. Let's put it like this. If you're still really happy with the LG Wing, Hold out for the Z Fold 4. If it's slowing down, you don't like it, go for the Z Fold 3. And our last question comes from uh, Gage Blackwell. Greg, thank you for your dedication to the daily updates. Here's my question of the day. Have you heard when or when or how American clients will be able to use the blood pressure app on the G uh, Galaxy Watch 4? I thought I was going to be a great addition on the Galaxy Watch 4 functionality, but have yet to take advantage of it. Do you have any insights on it? I haven't heard anything about that. Let me do a quick search to see if I can find anything. So as of September 16, 2021, they were still waiting on Food and Drug Administration to clear it here in the United States. As you know, that kind of stuff can take a long time. That was, I guess, two years ago they were trying to get it approved. I don't have a time frame for you, unfortunately. Thanks for your question, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.